up, everybody? Welcome to the Platform Podcast. Uh, episode one. Episode yeah. one. It's a launch. Wow. Yeah. Hoping uh, that we're going to be able to put out some content that people are going to appreciate and uh, and find entertaining. Yeah. So a little bit about, uh, I guess, where we are, uh, what we're what we're doing. So we're recording this in the Youth for Christ uh, in Portage La Prairie. Uh, also where our indoor skate park is, where we do skateboard programming. Yeah, to talk about the podcast, it's for us. All the things that we do around skateboarding are are with the idea that we're building the community. And uh, that's that's why we have the indoor spot that's why we do some of the uh, skate nights at other skate parks in the area and with covid uh, just feeling like we needed another way to connect the community and thought hey why not try doing a podcast and see if see if we can uh, entertain people while they're uh, locked down yeah (laughs) so we're super excited about this yeah so i guess we could uh, tell a bit about of ourse- about ourselves, a bit about ourselves. Right. Uh, yeah, so I'm Steve, and I've been part of the skate community here for, I guess, 20 years now. I'm old. Wow. Yeah. I'm really old. <laughs> and with me is Raleigh, and uh, Raleigh, tell, ab- tell us how you got into uh, skateboarding and ended up here. Yeah. Uh, so it's a long story. I grew up uh, outside of a small town called Oakville, which is about 20 minutes uh, east of Portage. When I was a young boy, <laughs> I uh, would play uh, Tony Hawk games. Of course. Almost of course. every young guy did in those days. Yep. Uh, <laughs> the first one I, first Tony Hawk game I played was... On the Nintendo 64. It was a lot of fun. It was... uh, I wasn't very good at it. I remember, like... It'd be like, oh, here's this level, this level, this level. Like, but you have to unlock it. And I I think (laughs) I... I played this game for years. And I think I only played the first level. Because I could never (laughs) figure out how how to beat it. Maybe the second level. But anyway... I guess I was just super interested in the in the Tony Hawk games. Yeah, at one point my uh, I just like was talking about skateboarding and I was asking uh, for a skateboard and stuff. And my and my parents didn't really just randomly buy us things, but one day uh, they went to Winnipeg and they came back with a skateboard. Uh, from sports check it's a walmart board nice yeah it was it was awesome (laughs) (laughs) i i was so happy and yeah i didn't really have anywhere to skate i would skate in my basement which had uh, carpet but it was very thin carpet that was uh, enough to roll i can't imagine how you could have rolled like I understand the idea of thin carpet and you can roll a little bit, yeah. but with a Wally board and, and the carpet, I like yeah. those things didn't roll on <laughs> nice, smooth, uh, nice, smooth pavement. How did, how did it even roll on I a little bit of carpet? I have no idea. <laughs> like, and eventually like when I was actually skateboarding, I would go down there sometimes and I'd set up, I had a thing I was going to make into a rail and I never did. It was just a, like a bar. I just never got the legs for it. And uh, I would try to skate that sometimes. And even with an actual board, it didn't roll. Right. Uh, but, um, yeah, so I would skate in the basement in my garage a little bit. But it's, yeah, my garage was usually full of stuff. But then across the road, uh, one of my neighbors owned a shop that he that he had there and he uh, did repairs on semis. And so it was a pretty big, it it wasn't big, but it was big enough of a, of a a cement pad. And I would just push around uh, in circles for, 
I'd go out there for a couple hours and just really? push around. Just there. roll around, yeah, not yeah. trying anything. No, I I didn't really know any of any tricks really. Like I played the Tony Hawk games, and but uh, it was obviously unrealistic. Like, so you you weren't aware of any like skate videos or anything? No. Oh no, I've never. No. S- I had I hadn't watched a skate video until. Oh, uh, I can't. I can't even remember the first skate video I watched, but okay. it was it was very later on. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I was I wasn't familiar with with skateboarding in in general. It just looked cool, and I just pushed. Yeah, around. it's amazing that you like stuck with it. I can't imagine like um, not under like just to roll around and you didn't know like what the mechanics of a trick were. You didn't have any 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 way of really learning and a board that probably hardly rolled yeah and yet you uh you stuck with it that's pretty impressive (laughs) yeah like i i assume there was tricks but i didn't know any of the names or whatever i i knew nothing about skateboarding like didn't grow up around it nobody skateboarded uh in my area like you, uh, I assume that nobody at your school. No, uh, actually, when I was about, yeah, so I was about grade eight probably, and there was a couple guys that that were skating around town. They usually did biking stuff. Like a, a lot of the kids in my in my town would we just bike everywhere because there's not a lot of the streets aren't great for skateboarding and whatnot and. Uh, but I remember seeing a, a video of them ollieing over a board once. Oh, okay. But I, I was like, oh, that's cool. And then I never went back to it. Mm. So, but I was not, I wasn't uh, influenced uh, by them whatsoever. Like they didn't influence me to oh, okay. skateboard. It wasn't like, it wasn't like that. Um, right. Yeah. I, I actually forgot about that until now that they, <laughs> mm-hmm. that there was a couple guys that, that were skating, but I went to a family gathering one time and my cousin uh, showed me how to ollie. Um, nice. Yeah, he used to skate, I guess. He lived in Altona, but uh, I don't know if there was much skating in Altona at the time. Well, there isn't really now either, I don't think. I don't really know the scene in Altona. I shouldn't <laughs> assume things, but right. I don't think it's, I, I haven't heard of a booming scene in Altona. Well, um, Curtis is there now, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Curtis. Curtis will start it up again. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, he, he was teaching me how to ollie, but it was one of those things that I I did it, like or like I watched him, but I didn't take an interest in actually, in actually wanting to learn that. But it was always in the back of my mind that it was... I don't know that it was always in the back of my mind that he showed me, but I never did anything about it until I was a little bit older. Mm. Um, and then I remember my first Ollie, we caught it on film. My brother, I think it was my brother was filming and I did it on a piece of plywood, which is really weird because I did have other places <laughs> like cement pads to skate. Yeah. But I did it on a piece of plywood <laughs> And it basically, uh, when I ollied, it went straight rocket and then straight down rocket. Yeah. And uh, I would ollie over things doing that. And it was, <laughs> uh, I have no idea how I did it. Yeah. But. So did you, like a lot of kids, when they're learning like that, they they always start on grass, right? Like they'll, right because the board won't shoot out. But no, you went straight to... Yeah. Sheet of plywood and yeah. awesome. Yeah. I uh I wasn't moving, but it wasn't like I was stuck. Right. And like even now ollieing on grass is super uncomfortable. I don't know how people learn to skate on grass. Yeah, I never did either. I yeah. learned I learned on the road, but uh Get no but pop. lots of kids yeah. lots of kids do start on grass just so that they're not shooting out. Yeah. So yeah, once I learned how to Ollie, then it was like Game changer. Oh, well, I didn't really learn how to ollie because it was like really terrible. <laughs> but then 
I was uh, like a lot of kids back then would look up five easy tricks to do, and half of them aren't even tricks. Right. Half of them are like I don't I don't even know what they would be like the baby baby leaf or whatever you call it. Is that what you call it? I've never heard of that before. Baby leaf. No. Oh, someone's <laughs> called it that before. And I can't remember who. <laughs> That's when you like put both your feet under the board when it's upside down. Yeah. And, and jump and it, it flips up. Yeah. I yeah. don't actually know what that's called. I don't know. I, I heard teach s- kids that all the time, but yeah, I don't know what it's called. I've heard it been called baby leaf. Interesting. Which is weird because I thought you were the one that told me that. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that before in my life. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, I watched this video and it, and it was saying how to Ollie. And it was saying to slide your foot. So I had to relearn how to ollie basically Mm -hmm. because I had to learn to level it out instead of teeter tottering or whatever. I don't know how you describe that. Right. (laughs) It goes up and then down. So yeah, I relearned how to ollie and then it was, yeah, everything. I wouldn't say I uh, like a lot of stories you hear and people are like, once I learn how to ollie, I just progress like crazy. Yeah, and you were just tearing around Oakville, yeah. all in all the curbs and <laughs> yeah, what curbs? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in, in Oakville there was just that three. There's a three stair on a on a church that has a terrible. The run up's very rough, and the landing's even rougher. So it's enough run up, but it's it's just terrible. Um, but it was probably one of my first the first stairs I ever hit. Yeah, once I got my license, I was just like, first day I got my license, I went into Oakville and just ripped around. and On your Wally board? On my Wally board. <laughs> I skated Wally boards for, for quite a while. Like I would, me and my one friend went to Morris one time, two, like hour and a half, two hours away. And uh, I dro- drove there and I was just, we, we did it a, quite a few times actually. This just going to Morris to skate. Wow! And I would just on bring, boards. Well, I would bring my Walmart board. Yeah. He had a he had a toy machine, toy machine board. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, I can't, I can't imagine like skating on on a board like that that long. Yeah, I I couldn't either. I didn't realize there was a different kind of board. Like Obviously like an they actual were board. breaking all the time. I broke so many trucks. It was, I broke more trucks than I did boards. Which is interesting because I always thought of those boards as cardboard. Yeah. (laughs) Because when they break, they didn't actually like splinter or anything. They just kind of like tore. Right. And so I always thought, are these things like made out of cardboard or what? (laughs) Yeah, for sure. So how you skated that long and where I, like, I do understand breaking the trucks because those trucks, they, they were not very durable, but. But neither were the decks, which, so it surprised yeah. me that you weren't wrecking decks. I, I don't know if I was doing the right tricks to break the decks. I wasn't, like, I didn't know any rail tricks, and I wasn't hitting big enough drops. Mm. So I don't know what, what else. But I guess even if I'm breaking it, trucks doing ollies, I guess the boards would right. be breaking too. Yeah, that's a so good point. Yeah, maybe your ollies were just so nice oh, that you were on bolts yeah, all bolts the time, every time. Still, that's, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's why you don't break decks. <laughs> yeah. So in Morris, we were skating around, and my my buddy had a toy machine, and I don't know what his setup was, but it was like everything was brand new, whatever. And he didn't really like. He he was one of those people that skated because it was like cool i guess i don't know if it because it was cool but because like i was doing it and he was like oh i want to do it too so he went and put a toy machine board and then uh barely did like any tricks and then he bought it like a niger board or something and he oh, was yeah. one of those guys yeah. you know which was cool because i i would always get to ride his boards because yeah <laughs> I was the one actually learning how to skate. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Um, so after that, I was like, I need a new board. Like, I need to stop skating this Walmart trash. But I had tons of Walmart boards before this one. Like, mm. I probably went through like six of them or something. 
Maybe um, more. So talk about your first setup. Yeah. So my first setup. non wally Yeah. Is. Yeah. I can tell you all my first setups. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, my, my first setup was I had Bones wheels. Uh, I think they're Bones Classics uh, 52s. Um, and then I had red bearings. That's what people do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, yeah, the guy at the, I, I didn't really choose, um, what I wanted. This guy was just like at the, at the shop was just like, which shop were you, uh, which shop did you get your first, uh, set up from? I got my first setup at Skate Skates. Nice. For the most part, all the hardware was from Skate Skates. Mm. Yeah, he was just like, this is what everyone's skating. This is, you don't need much more than this. And like, he just like, he was really good. I don't remember, like, I wouldn't know him to see him now. But, uh, yeah, I've always found that the guys at Skate Skates are, have always been super helpful. They're not trying to oversell. They're, yeah. They're and like, it's not like, oh, you, you're starting out with poser kind of thing, right. like like some people are. Like, yeah. yeah, some people aren't super accept, accepting of new skaters because I don't know why. I've just, I've noticed that mm. a, a bit where it's like the really core skaters sometimes are a little bit rude to the, to the newer skaters. Yeah, I think maybe sometimes you have to prove yourself a little bit that you're like going to stick it out because you see lots of kids that, buy boards and then and then they kind of disappear so it's like is it worth investing in this kid just because yeah. he's investing in a board let's let's wait and see if he's gonna s- stick around right I don't, I don't know i'm guessing that's part of it yeah that could be but yeah uh i got uh the bones bearings and then i got raw thunders they were lows I still have them after like five years or whatever it is. Nice. Yeah. That's, that's, that's helpful after breaking all those, uh, Wally trucks, eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Something that lasts. Yeah. And I'm kind of like, they're probably at the point where I could get rid of them, but I like, I don't know if I want to break in new trucks Yeah, because I've never done it. Problem. I've never done it before. And so I'm like kind of nervous mm. even like going to do like a 50 50 stall on a, on a quarter, like an axle stall mm. just makes me nervous that it's because I, new trucks. yeah. Cause I got it all flat and grooved and everything that, right. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Like it might depend, I guess. Like I, I heard a while ago, some uh, pro talking about how, um, nowadays they make the bushings, uh, a lot better so that they feel more broken in than, than they used to. Oh. But you're not talking necessarily about bushings. You're talking about the grooves and stuff. Uh, the which, metal, yeah. 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 Which, which, I'm curious how much you would notice that. Yeah. I I just, I'm really nervous about it, so I haven't done it yeah, yet. Yeah. I've never had a problem with new trucks. Like mm. whenever I've got new trucks, it, it hasn't been a huge thing. Like dialing them in as far as like how loose you want them right. and stuff like that is takes a bit of time for me but uh but it's never i've never noticed it that much like mm. with the grooves and that really okay of course i don't do crooks it, the crook groove is probably yeah. the one that you notice the most on a truck yeah well i don't do crooks either so i think i'm <laughs> safe on that <laughs> what deck did you go with i got a scam deck scam skate nice yeah uh the graffiti one so that's the, that must be one of the, was that one of the first ones that they had? No, maybe not. Uh, I'm curious where that, we'll have to have those guys on sometime and talk about uh, what the first one was, but that one was pretty early on. Yeah. And that was uh, Peter Thomas artwork on it. Right. Yeah. 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 Sweet. Uh, so yeah, that, that was my setup, my first setup and probably like Mav or Jessup grip i don't know yeah i was gonna say it doesn't matter but it really does matter it does matter (laughs) yeah between those two (laughs) it does matter as long as it's not bullet i'm fine with it (laughs) some people like their bullet i know i i feel like you're just like it's like 
two ollies and you don't even have shoes anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a thing. People that like bullet grip don't like shoes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So yeah, after I got that board, it was. I think that's where the game changer was because it was. Oh, I'm sure it would be because yeah. to go from a Wally board to that, yeah. all of a sudden it's a whole new world, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I at that point I was coming into town a bit more. I would go to the skate park and, um, or if you want to call it a skate park, we can. But <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's a parking lot with some ramps at the yeah. bottom of the bridge. Yeah, I would go there, but I remember. Uh, so one of the guys we skate with, Joel, I remember he was skating with this one guy, uh, and they were like skating all the time. And then one day I was at the park with my cousin and she was just hanging out and then I was skating and I remember it was, it was at lunch break and they pulled up to skate for the, for the lunch break and I left. I was so scared. And now <laughs> me and Joel are like, I love skating with Joel. <laughs> He's yeah. like, we do like Brandon trips and stuff, and you just nervous skating in front of them, or were you scared yeah. of what what they like that they were gonna um, attack you, or what, no, what were you thinking? no, I was just nervous to skate just because I was like, I, I, especially at that park, I couldn't do anything really. Like right. I knew like how to, that, yeah, that park isn't really designed for beginners. Like if you don't have a decent ollie, it's there's not a lot of tricks you're gonna do at that park. Yeah, and I I remember the. Uh, I, I was skating and then they pulled up and uh, Joel's Joel's friend who is he is the same age as me gets out of the car like immediately grabs his board runs and board slides the double stack like perfectly yeah. and I was like I'm out of here because <laughs> that was like like s someone that hasn't seen a lot of skateboarding doesn't skate with anybody that was huge and yeah. I was like and it was intimidating very intimidating yeah, yeah. yeah. But I think I think going to parks sometimes people will try to get some pretty good, put out some pretty good tricks or whatever, like their best tricks when people show up, so that it's like, this is what I can do. Kind of thing. Yeah, because yeah, you're right. Because I think like there's that part of us that like when a new dude rolls up, it's like we're all kind of like watching, like okay, what kind of where does this guy fit right like, with his skill level right. Is he going to be like really good or is he a beginner? And, and it's like, and it's so funny because, because we all do that. Then when we're the new guy at the park, then we feel self-conscious. Right. Mm. And a long time ago, I had to come to realize that the other dudes don't actually care that much about like when I roll up to the park, they're probably going to check to see kind of where I fit skill level wise, but it's not like there's judgment with it. Yeah. It's just, okay, now I know kind of what level this guy's at. Now yeah. I'll go back to whatever I was doing. Yeah, exactly. Right? Like it's, it's kind of it's just, scope out the new guy. Yeah, and then exactly. It's whatever. Yeah, and yeah. so once you realize that, then it's like, okay, like I'll just do whatever and and then they'll know that I suck. And yeah, then, yeah. And then we're fine. We're, then everyone can go back to skating and I can I can have fun without worrying about people watching me or or judging exactly <laughs> yeah <laughs> and so uh yeah so I, I remember that i was got my new board or whatever i was skating around and uh the interesting thing just to go back to that yeah. the interesting thing would be so those dudes like they're coming and they're they see somebody else skating there they're probably stoked on it yeah, and they show up and it's like oh awesome there's somebody else skating here and then you take off and yeah. it's like oh <laughs> that sucks the dude just left yeah yeah <laughs> and i remember that was the first time i ever like knew who joel was i look back at it now i'm like oh he's such a fool I'm like joel's such a nice guy and i right like exactly. i love skating with joel now and yeah and and that's what i'm saying like joel would have been stoked just to have somebody else to skate with yeah him. for sure <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so that's where you started yeah. and uh and you got involved with with our programs here. Yep. And you started doing some one-on-one -on -one mentoring with kids at yeah, the skate park, which was awesome. Yeah. Um, that's probably the era where I probably would have started to get to know you the most. Yeah. Was in that that kind of season. Yeah, I knew of you for a while, but we didn't mm -hmm. really do anything. Like, I think even when I was mentoring those kids, 
we weren't like doing skate ministry together. No, we weren't doing any skating. I don't remember when I started skating, but we weren't with you. But I can't. I don't think we were skating then. No, like you were. Yeah, you were just doing the thing with the kids, and yeah. and I'd see you around using the using the ramps and stuff. Yeah, and those terrible, terrible portable ramps. Yeah, <laughs> but they, it's what we had. Yeah. 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 And so, yeah, you were hanging out with kids and, and building into them, which was awesome. And then started uh, hanging out for skate night. Yeah. We go out to Long Plains to the park there. And, and that, was, that was probably one of the first times I ever skated with you is at the Long, probably, one of the long yeah. Plain nights. Yeah. Because I, I think I remember going into the van then and being super nervous because there was like... <laughs> All these skaters I didn't know, and <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't really remember who was skating at the time, but mm. yeah, I wouldn't remember yeah who was at that time either. But but yeah, and he, here we are now. You've you've been doing a lot, like uh, doing lots of volunteering at skate nights, volunteering at drop in night uh, when they run the park, and then uh, working with the summer program, doing skate stuff, and now just recently came on full time to uh to run the skate program here which is awesome yeah um really excited about that i'm s- so excited as well <laughs> yeah, excited to do the podcast with you yeah and yeah hopefully the idea is that because i'm old and you're young <laughs> we'll just pass the uh, baton on to you and you can keep running with it and uh, <laughs> and uh keep up with the young skate kids yeah, that's the hope. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, so Sweet. for those that don't know me, I'm Steve, and I've yeah I've been part of the local uh, skateboard scene here for 20 years. Over those years, it's it's changed a lot, but it's been a blast, and we've seen uh, a lot of a lot of skaters come through and and do a lot of a lot of different things with different people. Mm. Um, so, yeah, we've tried all kinds of things to keep the skateboard scene alive and healthy here. And, yeah, even going as far as now doing the podcast, right? Yeah, it's all part of it. Yeah. The interesting thing is I started as a BMXer as a teenager. And the interesting thing about that is sometimes I um, I feel uh, inferior or embarrassed about that. Mm. because like, can I call myself a core skater because like I was a BMX kid and, and it was a long transition where I was like, I was skating and, and BMXing at the same time or a lot of BMX and dabbling in skateboarding. And so it was just like, there was a long time in, in there where like some of the old guys, uh, from way back in the, in the, I guess the nineties that were skating here, they would not have seen me as a skater. They would have mm. seen me as a BMX guy and maybe tried skating a little bit. And they probably wouldn't like, well, mo- a lot of them would not have respect for me as a skater because, because of the amount of time I spent on a BMX. Right. And so coming from that, I've like, I've not always felt like, oh, well, I'm, I'm not core because I don't have the, I don't, I didn't skate as a kid. I, I started skating it in my twenties, uh, when like BMX was dying out and everyone was skating. I really enjoyed skating. I enjoyed the challenge. I felt like skateboarding was a lot harder to Mm. learn than BMX. Yeah. And because of that, I loved that challenge and, uh, it took time, but I eventually moved over. And yeah. now, as you know, I I don't spend a lot of time on a BMX bike. <laughs> I haven't yeah. seen you on a BMX in quite a while. I've seen you do a couple of tricks at, in the park, but not nothing like you haven't done a whole night on a BMX kind of right. thing. Right, yeah. I think in the, yeah, there was a time there where it was fun to, you know, I still had enough BMX skill that, I could pick up a bike and, and do a trick to wow the kids and right. surprise them yeah. uh, to see an old guy jump on a BMX and do something. <laughs> uh, so that was, it was more out of an entertainment thing for kids as anything at that point. 
but there was a time where there was some core skaters in the community that didn't really respect um, who I was or, mm. or my involvement because of, because of my BMX background and because I still, I still rode the BMX at that time. Right. And so, so yeah, sometimes I, I still feel like, can I call myself a skater? Because, right. Because it's, yeah, I just sometimes feel like maybe not a fraud, but, but, uh, so at, at this time, did you have, uh, the park open at, uh, Campbell, Campbell soup then? No, this is, this would be before Campbell soup. Oh, okay. Um, so Campbell soup, uh, for those of you that don't know that are watching, this is, uh, one of the first indoor parks that we ran here locally. It was in, it's, it was in, uh, in the warehouse of an, of an abandoned Campbell soup plant. <laughs> and so we had a awesome spot there and we ran that for quite a few years. But before that, which is where our name came from is the platform, which is, mm. was a spot, uh, by the tracks. And it was, a uh, a big warehouse building that burned down. I guess that building burned down probably in the early eighties. Oh, okay. And left a big cement pad that was not being developed. And so the skaters started using it. Well, we used it for BMX back when I was a kid. I remember we had a eight foot quarter pipe on there. Eight uh, feet. Yeah. For BMX. Wow. And so I remember going there and, uh, and riding BMX and then it's as BMX died and skateboarding came, became more popular, then that space was taken over by the skaters mm. and, uh, and it became a really popular skate spot and the skate scene was thriving. Mm. And, uh, that's when street skating kind of got, uh, got bigger. Then? That's right. So yeah. coming out of the eighties into the nineties street, uh, street skating really got popular and it made it way more accessible for us on the prairies. Right. right. Because before that you would have needed vert ramps. Cause that's what, that's all the skateboarding you <laughs> saw was vert. And then it switched to street and all of a sudden it's like, Oh, us on the prairies, we can have boards and we can create, um, spots that replicated some of the stuff that you could see right. in skate videos and, and stuff. And the boards were changing sizes and stuff. And so, so yeah, that was, that's where it really blew up when it became way more accessible. So that spot was really popular. There were nights where it was crowds of dudes on that, on that platform. Wow. And, uh, I've seen some pictures of that place. I was too young. Right. Um, <clears throat> at that time, but I've seen pictures of it and man, it looks, it looks so sweet. Yeah, so that's that's where I would have started, like really been learning how to mm. skateboard was was at that spot, and yeah, so even though you know I had this, I had this what I felt was lack of respect because of my BMX background. When I jump on the board, there were still dudes that were super encouraging and mm. and helpful, teaching me to do tricks and cheering me on. And that, that was one of the things that really attracted me to the skateboarding actually was this idea that it didn't matter what skill level you were at, that space was super encouraging to everybody. So as a beginner, I would be learning like maybe to ollie over an obstacle, a little thing on the ground. And, you know, I'd practice and practice. And when I got it, all these dudes that were really good would stop and clap and yeah. cheer for me. Right. It's kind of crazy how that, like, I, I know that feeling too. Like sometimes when we're skating with some of the dudes in here that are like significantly better than me, when I do a trick that I've been working on for a while and the hype that comes out of these guys, I'm like, exactly. And that was the thing that really drew me was that community. And so like, if a dude was trying a, a really advanced trick and everyone would stop and cheer when he landed it and the kid practicing the ollie would get the same height, yeah. right? Uh, that, was, that was just so fascinating to me. And, and, uh, and it just like the draw of it doesn't matter what level you're at, you're included was, was so amazing. And, yeah. and I appreciated that so much. And that's, that's one of the reasons 
that I would say that I still skate is because of that. Mm. And, and that's also one of the things that I really try to make sure that that lives on in our culture at that, we continue to cheer for that kid that's just learning it's as much as the, the guys that are being a little crazier. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah. Because yeah. without encouragement, then I find it harder to progress um, that way. Like, if I don't have that, I think that's why when I was learning how to skate, I wasn't progressing as fast because there wasn't people like encouraging me, giving me tips and whatever. But in the community, when because it's such an encourage, encouraging thing. And I'm like so close to a trick that I'm like, oh, I'm not even close to. And someone's like, man, like getting so excited for me. Right. I feel like I'm closer, you know? Yeah. And it's just like. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And so I've always loved that about the skate community. And, um, and I, like, I even think of, I used to always talk about um, a verse in the Bible that uh that i feel is so relevant for skateboarding and that's out of john ten ten, which is um the thief comes to to kill and destroy but i've come to give you life and life to the full mm. and when it when it says i uh, it's talking about jesus and and i think of that like i often think about that in in skateboarding about how full it is because of the community it's it's full Right. right. Like the thief comes to destroy. Uh, and I think in skateboarding, if you have somebody that's like gonna, gonna tear you down, oh, you suck and, and you're not very good at that. Why do you even skateboard or whatever? That's tearing you down. That's like, that's, you're not going to be hanging around much. Whereas mm. this idea of community where we're all cheered on and that, that's, that's what makes life feel full. Right. And, uh, and so I often like, I've often said in the past that, that Jesus, I think like his, his character is portrayed in the skateboard community when we, when we do that. And that's, Mm. that's why you can feel like skateboarding is life giving. Yeah. And, uh, not only does it give you life, but life to the full. So, (laughs) There's, awesome. there's my little sermon for the, for the <laughs> first episode. Yep. <laughs> okay. So we're coming close to the end of this episode. And, uh, but before we go, I, uh, would like to ask, um, everybody listening, uh, for feedback on, uh, things that you want to hear, um, Things that you, yeah, just things that you want us to talk about. Um, yeah, the podcast is for for you, the listener. Um, it's about, like we've been saying all along, it's about building the community. And so you are the community. So we, we want to do this um, with you. And so uh, we'd love comments uh, on YouTube. You can comment below. And... Uh, Otherwise, you can DM us or uh, leave comments on our our Insta, and uh, yeah, wh- what do you what would you like to hear from us? I'm sure, like th- especially those of you that know know us and what we're doing here, you have you have certain things you'd like to hear. Yeah, uh, let us know, and we'll we'll bring it up in future future episodes. Uh, we'd love to hear from from the people listening, just to know that you want to be involved and whatever. Cause that's what this, this podcast, a lot, most of it is about is reaching out to the, to the people that we can't be with right now. Right. Um, and so hearing from you is, uh, very important to us for sure. And, and if you're thinking in your mind, well, they wouldn't want to hear from me. You're lying to yourself. We do want to hear from we you. Do want to I hear don't from care you. Who, who you are. I want to, I want to hear from you. Yeah, so. and for those of you that are uh, just listening on uh, on a podcast app of some kind, don't forget to rate us like uh, mm-hmm. like every other podcast is asking for <laughs> for you to give a rating and a review because it's helpful. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Yeah, see you later.